Thanks for dropping in. This is going to be a bit different than my usual videos. Instead of designing fidgets, puzzle boxes, or other mechanical things, I'm going to dedicate the entire month of September to learning how to use Nomad Sculpt on the iPad. Because I don't know what I'm doing, these videos will be more like an art journal than a tutorial. I'll record my process, and then share whatever models I make. If you stop by looking for a Nomad Sculpt tutorial, check out Dave Reed and Small Robot Studio. Both of those channels are linked in the description, and without them, this series would have had a really rough start. For my first model, I'm creating a happy ghost. It should be pretty simple, but it's still too organic for my usual CAD workflow. If you want to skip the process and just see the finished model, jump ahead to 13 minutes and 11 seconds. With that intro out of the way, welcome to my Sculptember series.
and it's done. I'm not sure I captured all the cuteness from the sketch, but I'm really happy with how this first model turned out. It also ended up being really easy to print. This print required no supports at all, and only minimal infill. Since this is my first Sculpt Timber video, I decided to begin with a bang and release a second model. This mini mummy is a tangle of noodly bandages. Unlike the ghost, the print does require supports, and a little post-print cleanup under the arms and around the hanging bandage. To make printing easier, there's a second version of this model that slices the mummy down the side. There's still a few overhangs, but there's far fewer of them than when the model was a single part. Next week, I'll be back with another Sculpt Timber design. With Halloween fast approaching, I'd like to stick with this theme, so let me know what classic movie monsters you'd like for me to tackle next. Also, what do you think of this video format? Do you prefer seeing the entire process? Or would it be better just to clip out a few steps here or there? But until next week, happy printing, and thanks for stopping by. Unfortunately, I didn't record the entire process of creating the mummy. So for a little bit of bonus material, I figure I'd show you the process I used to create the bandages. For that, I use the tube tool and then select curve, and I draw a curve around the mummy's body. As you can see, this bandage kind of clips through his body, so I selected snap and clicked through these points so that way they snapped to the surface of the mummy. If I were to drag this point over here, it snaps all the way to the arm. And then I would just go around and create whatever bandage loop I wanted. Once I had something I was pretty happy with, I would go ahead and subdivide the shape a bit to make it a little bit smoother then validate it and use the flatten tool and just very lightly flatten one side of this band. And the nice thing about using the flatten tool as opposed to defining the profile of this tube is I could change, I could easily change the angle that the flat is facing. So right here, the flat is kind of parallel to the mummy's body. Then as I bend it around, maybe I want the flat side to dip a little bit over here. So then I can blend those two flat sides together and run it all the way down the band. Once I had an initial flat plane, I could go back over with a little bit more pressure and flatten it as much as I want to create that sort of noodle bandage look. And sometimes I would intentionally allow an edge within the bandage, kind of like as if it had uh, gotten uh, caught in a twist. Then I would just lay a few more tubes down, set that to snap, place these points, and then occasionally I would have a point where uh, the bandages would cross over. And I would decide between having the bandage run on top or below the other bandage. If I was running it below, I would turn off snap, set the camera to the side, and pull it into the body a little bit. Then I would subdivide the shape, change whatever size bandage I wanted, validate it, and go back to making another flat plane. Obviously, this process took a lot of time, and one of the reasons I don't have a recording of the mummy is because I would start and restart this process probably three or four times until I found the right bandage size and look that I was happy with. So that was my process for creating the mummy. Like I said, this isn't intended to be a tutorial, but I hope that helps. See you next time.